Hello there, viewing audience. This is David Burke. Uh, I'm the guy behind Cummings Reviews, in case you can not figure out. So, um, yeah, this is a behind-the-scenes video where I'm going to sort of walk you through uh, how I made Cummings Reviews. Now, this is all the footage you're seeing and all the audio you're hearing has been recorded um, after Follies uh, and after the initial video was done. So right now, the footage you're seeing is me working on the extended cut of Cummings reviews and I'm gonna kinda try and talk you through what I'm doing here even though um, I kinda work a little fast uh, and probably won't have the time to talk about everything but I'll do my best to give you sort of a feel so um, I guess just to talk about where it came from first uh, Cummings reviews was first brought up um, well, actually what happened was uh, Nate Cummings who plays Mr. Cummings obviously in the sketch uh, had just been announced to have won the Shakespeare competition here. And so we found out that he wasn't going to be able to, uh, to be in Follies itself. He wouldn't be able to perform on stage. Um, but I knew that he wanted to be in Follies, and I knew that, <laughs> that it, wouldn't it be cool if he could do his dad for Follies. And so uh, I started looking at uh, uh, how could we get Nate in to a video, because Follies has had videos in the past, uh, could we do some video? And I brought it up at one of the uh, writers' meetings, and Mr. Corley, uh, director of Follies, mentioned um, that there had been an idea in the past of Mr. Cummings re reviewing uh, slew videos, and I thought, there it is. That's my idea. Uh, that's what I'll work with, and so I kind of took off with that. The fireplace that you see comes uh, from... It's inspired by, apparently, uh, back in the day when uh, Dr. Moran had just become principal, uh, they were trying to get students to uh, put locks on lockers. Uh, this is a big new idea because there's a problem with theft. I'm sure you can look it up. Prep News has probably got it archived. Either way, apparently he made this video uh, of just him sitting, or someone made this video of him sitting in front of a fireplace telling people why they should put locks on their lockers. Uh, and it, I'd love to find this thing, but never could. Um, by the way, in the editing right now, that's just me putting in credits. Uh, I hadn't thought about credits until I saw the English Office guys did credits, but at that point, um, I would have to go back and take content out of, uh, of Cummings Reviews if I wanted credits for the version, because it was already kind of pushing it in terms of time. Uh, I had had, um, originally Cummings Reviews was intended to be, uh, two to three minutes, but, um... I was producing it, and the opening started... I, the first thing I did was the opening, and that was like 40-something seconds. And so uh, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just going to edit it as much as I can and then see how much Mr. Corley wants. And so I, I did, and he said he wanted like five to six minutes. So it's about um, five minutes, 50 seconds. And so I didn't think about credits until after that. And so now I've put credits in the extended cut, as you can see. Anyway, uh, idea for Cummings Reviews, yeah, so I uh, didn't work on it for a long time, was busy with other Follies-related stuff and homework and procrastination, and so finally um, I got got working on this. Um, uh, Nate had always been, in, been on board. I had brought up the idea to him when we first talked about it, so it was good to have him uh, willing to work, and so we... Uh, we just did it the weekend before Follies um, at my house. <laughs> it's my house, uh, which is kind of funny since we run away at the end. And so, yeah, we filmed it. I The videos were chosen. I guess I should talk about that. The Gadfly one was the one that I've always had in mind, mostly because of the bit where Nate is transforming into Santa Claus. I thought that would be funny. If we originally I just planned that Mr. Cummings would like lose it when he saw that Nate had put him on the uh, the naughty list, but it was actually Nate who came up with the idea of uh, of my involvement. I was never initially in the in the uh, sketch at all. That was something that he that we sort of improvised. Um, Senior Follies 2003. Uh, that clip I had been. Um, I had just been, like, perusing the internet for old Follies clips, just sort of curious. I'd only seen um, Senior Follies 2014 before this, so I wanted a good feel for what other Follies were like, and so I came across this clip, and I said, wouldn't it be cool if we use that? Um, SluTube, they've always been someone I've had in mind. Initially, I was thinking about doing maybe two SluTube videos, and 
it was the ones that I had in mind were the one that we did, which was the freshman one. And then also just some other one, like um, I was thinking about maybe the Mission Week one from this year. Uh, KOHI, I've always wanted to do them. Pretty much any episode would work with them. And then Believe It, Become It, it's too easy. <laughs> it's really easy just to lampoon that. Uh, I've done it before and doing it again. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's where all that stuff came from. We got together, we filmed it, and then I started work uh, that Sunday, uh, the uh, the day after we filmed it. Uh, I did the opening, and then, um, yeah, just worked uh, up until the point, and it was done by Wednesday that week uh, for a tech rehearsal, and uh, then it was in the show, but I, ha- I hadn't touched it until, until I started doing this footage here, so... Uh, what you can see me doing now is just doing simple some simple titles. If you notice, I've kept the font consistent with the other secondary font that's used in here. It sounds like I'm talking about branding a lot, and it, it's kind of how this works, but um, this is just sort of for consistency's sake in this video to make it look nice. I guess I could have done another font for the credits, but uh, I'd have to go through and pick it out, and it's just easier to use this same one. Uh, you'll notice me playing through footage a lot during this, and that's because part of video editing is just going over your work and making sure it looks okay. You'll run through it, and you'll run through it, and you'll run through it time and time again. You have to think, uh, this may be like just a one-time watch for some people, but other people may look over it and over and over it like I do. Uh, and like just sort of think about each individual aspect. Plus, the more you watch over it, the stronger it is in the long run. So... Um, it's important to get that down, uh, etc. I do the same thing with Gadfly. If uh, Whenever I edit Gadfly, I'll run through my piece time and time again. Little adjustments like C here, I noticed that it was not the uh, text was not centered uh, properly, so now I'm going in and centering the text so that that looks nice. And thankfully, um, Final Cut Pro will do that automatically with, um, like you saw the little yellow lines pop up there, that's Final Cut kind of adding its input on uh, on how I do that. So fun little insight there. Um, I'm not sure how long this, this first clip is. I, I filmed this in several clips. Uh, it looks like it's just about to end here. Um, yeah, it's probably done now that I think about it. We'll just move on to the next one. Here. Now we move on to some behind-the-scenes footage two, uh, of three, the filming. Four, this five, is uh, an six, audio test that I did. Seven. Eight. Not incredibly exciting. Okay. Just something that happens. This is an unused shot for the opening uh, credits um, that ultimately I didn't use, uh, mostly just because I couldn't find somewhere to, to make it fit. I like this shot, but it's just a matter of sort of theming, and ultimately there was really no place for this clip, despite how much I, I enjoy uh, this is just zoom-in shot. Uh, so now we're going to move on. This is actually, there's me. Uh, originally my character did appear, we filmed shots with, uh, with me playing myself. Um, none of which I liked really. Ultimately, I don't like my, my motion. I'm fine with like the costume and stuff, which is literally just what I was wearing for the day. Plus a backwards cap to sort of give a cameraman feel. But, um, I didn't think any of the shots that I filmed really worked. I mean, we had some ideas where like, I wouldn't be able to find Nate at the beginning, and then we would go into like a uh, a police standby. But I felt like more than one police standby would be rough. This is the part where we got the uh, first got the idea to do the sleeping scene. It was like Nate just found a blanket and uh, and said, "Wouldn't it be cool if he fell asleep?" And so that's how that happened. This is uh, the end of the scene where Nate calls uh, Nate, and I run off. But you can see there was obviously more filmed. Uh, that's about where it would, where it might have cut if I went longer, but we actually come back into the room before I turn off the camera. Interestingly enough, uh, please don't ask why, uh, I didn't bother turning it off, but this is where we, we, we talked, like, right after we filmed anything, just sort of like, uh, what, what should this look like, and like, and then we can go into X, Y, A, B, or Z, so that was just sort of us talking. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Um, let me see. I'm kind of looking at what the next clip is going to be. Um, ah, yes. Next clip is sort of an, another cut. Uh, obviously, I cut the ending. We're like, uh, where it's like, uh, but I had filmed dialogue for that. And Nate had dialogue in response to that. Uh, um, and then what happens is we just sort of get up. 
as you can see right here. And we get up and we walk away again. But ultimately the ending where it just cuts out is stronger. And so that's what we went with. I had even planned initially to have the, um, the a longer ending uh, in the extended cut, but I never went ahead with it. Um, right now what you're seeing is, um, is uh, this is the original cut of the opening. So though, when I first went into editing, this was the first thing I did. And so uh, this is what the first cut is. It looks remarkably similar to what we went with in the end, and that's because it is, but here's where things get different. You'll notice this shot is different. It's a bit longer, cut slightly differently. Um, you can see I'm going to do a side to side or side by side here. Now it's time for where, uh, where you can see. Also, I trimmed off like a, a second or so just to tighten it up. Really simple stuff, but um, I don't know. <laughs> it makes a difference to me in the long run. So here we go, side by side. See how they're the same here. On the left, you've got the. Um, the original and then on the right you have the final so same th thus far and then again same shot with the Twilight book wait for it and now it's different so notice how uh, the final one cuts away to a different shot and then there's also like a second or so shaved off in there so we don't see him walking as much which is kind of boring. Now it's time. Now it's time. And see, see how review. now it's the same Mark, again, but you can Mark see coming. the time difference episode, in, uh, in like what I shaved off. How minimal it is, but it makes a big impact uh, just in terms of timing, because like one extra second or so can really be annoying when you're editing that stuff. By the way, that picture that you saw earlier of uh, of Mr. Cummings was originally intended for the. Um, for the please stand by screen, but I ended up not going through with it in the end. So now we're actually kind of looking into the editing process. Right now I'm working on the extended edition, as I mentioned earlier. And so you can see the way that the project works is that uh, all of the individual uh, clips uh, of just Nate talking and of the episode are all compound clips, which in Final Cut, a compound clip is essentially when you take a group of clips and then just combine them into one. So it's just like an original file for video. So it's base it simplifies the process a bit. Um, and so for me, what that allows me to do is up, if you look in the top left, you see all the source video. And instead of having like two source videos, one of, uh, of the video that Nate's watching and then one of Nate himself, I combine them into one source video, which is what I'm using. And these clips can be edited at will. So you'll notice in the video, a lot of times it goes to a full screen shot of what Nate's watching so that the audience can see what he's seeing. And I do all of that editing from inside the clip, which you should see here shortly. What I'm doing now is just screening. Um, I have to decide what else I want to add to the video. And so to do that, I'm running through the video and seeing what are good jokes. And so you can see exciting never before seen shots of Nate just doing nothing comments that ultimately are just either not very good or he screws up in them so nothing too remotely exciting otherwise it would have been in the video a lot of this is just him sitting and watching and sort of thinking up stuff there's a lot of editing that goes through to make this interesting for the viewer uh, timing is key like I can't focus on him just sitting for too long unless it makes sense for the joke so understanding how much is too much is very important especially when I'm working on like the time constraint like I was with the original video I had some leeway with the extended edition now here you can see here's the clip you might recognize of him dancing and I decided to extend that for the extended edition but I'd already done that at this point so now there er yeah what are we doing now yep nope no i guess i hadn't decided see this is where i decide to extend it so i just go through there make it a little bit longer again this is great because it extends everything and so i don't have to worry about it now i want some jokes in there because there there's a lot of time in the video that nothing happens and he makes a few jokes so now i'm going back into the video uh and taking a look here so I think that this joke might be okay, the one where he makes a comment about uh, Mr. Sean Hoff being uh, younger. Uh, and so what I do is I go in and I find the part of the video that the audience needs to see, 
where we get established that this is Mr. Schoenhoff in his office. I assume I'm saying the name correctly. I'm sorry if I'm not. And so I select the part of the video I want, drag it, drag it into the project, and put it in there where it makes chronological sense. Now I go in and get the part where Nate makes the comment, which is a few seconds after, and I don't want the dead time in between him think him seeing the video and him deciding what he wants to say. And so now I go in, I find the part where he comments, I select it, and I drag it in. Now the audience once should see, uh, just should see uh, the clip of Mr. Shanha full screen because it's important to them seeing the clip as opposed to seeing Nate. So now I'm going to double click, and so now you can see the inner workings of that clip, how it's two layered. I will uh, break the clip into pieces so that way I have this piece selected here, and then I'll go in, change the positioning so that it is centered and then adjust the size so that it's 100% and fills up the whole screen. When I go in and look at it, bam, just like that. Looks uh, just like you see it in the clip, and it cuts out there. I go back. Now I go to Nate's comment, and what I'm doing here now is uh, listening to the audio, and so I'm going to take the audio down in that clip so that you can hear Nate better and you don't hear the video uh, booming over him. Very key that you can that there's good audio balance, especially when it was played out of speakers like it was, but just listening with headphones and stuff, you can oftentimes notice a lot of this type of thing. And so it's important to get it right. And, and now I play over the clip to make sure that it looks okay and that I'm happy with it, checking my work, so to speak. So let's see. Yep, now I got to play over the, oh, nope, nope, go back in, see, I wasn't happy with it. I want to bring Nate up a bit, so I make a few dots there. In order to just bring up the audio part of the clip that I want the audio up on, uh, I do a lot of fiddling with the audio, especially when it's, like, a little different. And here I decide that his uh, the front part is even quieter than the end part of his comment, and so I decide to raise that even more than the end part so that it's easier to hear. So you can see me doing that there. Again, a lot of tweaking to make sure it sounds okay. i uh, got to make sure it sounds natural, and I have to make sure that the audience can't tell that I've been screwing with it because uh, that sort of ruins the illusion and that ruins the fun. But uh, for you watching uh, 17 or so minutes into this video, you get to know uh, <laughs> what I've been up to. Anyway, back into the video. Got to screen it, make sure it sounds okay. Got that part. We're in this clip, watching it, looks okay, looks okay, I decide that, now it's time to move on, and I get right back to screening. And that's generally how most of the editing for this works. Um, just repeat, 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 repeat. So, um, yeah, a lot of watching this. Um, let's see. Uh, when I did the, uh, the original cut, Oh, there's a clip that I wanted. Actually, that, that clip's interesting because that clip that you see there is um, is a clip that I edited for the er er version for Follies, but ultimately decided to cut. So I've done all the editing on that clip already. I just need to reselect it and drop it in, and it's a pre-made uh, clip. I had a few of those that I decided to cut early on in uh, in the editing. Now, a lot of this project actually was I had made – a longer version which was seven minutes long uh, for Follies and then I asked Mr. Coley how long he wanted it and so I did the cuts but I still kept the version that was seven minutes and obviously extended edition ends up being over eight minutes and so um, there were some clips that I had already inserted into this that you don't see me edit but right now this is a clip that I had cut from the seven minute version even and so, but I like that. I like this clip because, like, when he talks about Nate for the second time, he says, "There's my son again." And continuity-wise, it doesn't make sense when you're watching it, but usually it's ignorable. But if I can have it in here, that might that's cool. And then it also kind of uh, first raises uh, the part where where he says he never knew that Nate was in this, and I raise the uh, a bit of a concern, uh, kind of in my tone of voice, like, "Really? He never told you?" And kind of start to get worried. So it just sort of adds to the lore of the clip, if I can even call it lore, just more to the story for uh, for those who are oh so uh, in-depth with that sort of thing. And then it's right back to screening. 
Now this clip I sort of end screening early because anything after, uh, or well, I extend this part because, or wait, <laughs> actually I think I end up going back on this edit because I'm not sure about it. No? Yeah, I go back on this edit because I want to go back to editing this part. And then that was an edit I wanted to make where he makes another comment about Nate writing the letter, but I think I forget to do that. <laughs> so it's too late for it now, obviously. But ultimately, I don't think I lost much in that, so I'm not really worried about it. Anyway, back me messing with the audio again. I w realized that I... Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I realized that I haven't extended this clip for as long as I want to, so I have to go back in, adjust the audio, and then extend the clip so that it's long enough, play it a few times to make sure it sounds okay, and then ultimately get happy with it and forget that edit that I wanted to make after this. Video editing can be very monotonous sometimes, but uh, ultimately the goal is to make the product not monotonous, so there's a lot of monotony uh, involved. And I just used that word a bunch, so. Yep, uh, congratulations if you've stayed watching this video this long. Uh, I applaud your uh, dedication to Cummings Reviews and the sound of my voice, which I'm sure is not all that interesting. Um, uh, I guess I'll tell you, I'm recording all of this narration on a blue snowball microphone. Uh, it's part of the GAD Lab. It's the same one that I used for my voiceover in the video itself. Uh, a voiceover which I recorded and then re-recorded very close to publication because I thought that the first time I did through it, I was a little too loud. And I ended up being rather sensual with the second time, I thought. But, oh well, I kept it. So, we're at an interesting break here. Let me let me cut that clip because I think there's nothing that happens here for a while. Oh, shoot. Where's the... There we go. Okay, back at it, and um, let's see here. So, yeah, uh, I've pretty much explained exactly how most of the editing works. Again, now it's just me sort of looking over the cuts, uh, seeing if there's anything I want to extend. Uh, this clip was already extended, I think, from earlier work, um, because Nate has a great line where he says, uh, Hey, boy! And... <laughs> Uh, I cut it mostly for time in the uh, in the other cut, but uh, but here I, I definitely wanted to have it because he says that that's uh, an exact quote from uh, from his father. So so again, now it's me screening the early part of this sketch. Um, I kind of like how it opens with uh, with Mr. Cummings that one, but if there was any really good content for the uh, for the opening of this clip. Uh, uh, I would want to use it, if at all possible. Um, funny, the way I found the, these Senior Follies uh, 2003 clips was uh, already explained in this video, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm just going to stop right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually, I had to get two clips for the video. Because you see, there's the clip of the actual sketch that I used. And then additionally, there's the, uh, the opening title card, which never actually appears in the clip that I used. <clears throat> Excuse me. I uh, I had to go and uh, and get the opening of the show, which is a separate clip on, on YouTube, and use that one for, like, the two seconds that it appears. And it's all video when it appears in there. Uh, or I could have just used a still, but no, it's all video, so... <laughs> um, it's, it's fairly interesting going back and watching old senior Follies, seeing what jokes stuck which ones did not. Um, this sketch uh, in That Senior Follies had some good ideas, I think. Um, there are some very well-paced segments of it. The Mr. Cummings segment is paced okay. Uh, the Mr. George segment, which I cut from the, um, from the, uh, the cut for Follies, mostly because uh, I was afraid people wouldn't get the joke. Uh, and so pulled that one out but there's the mr george bit in the uh the actual video itself is uh is very short but it's uh very well done uh that one is the about the only one that's perfect size and so uh and then it just gets really dull and monotonous and just boring 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 
and, and like the a lot of the reason that uh, that the uh, the sleeping scene was implemented was so that we didn't have to watch the rest of it because we got so bored. Um, same thing can be true for the bit in KUHI where uh, where Nate says, uh, can, "Can I stop watching this one now? I'm bored." Uh, that's because we we were legitimately bored because KUHI is mostly weather on episodes that happen to have weather and. It's just weather ripped exclusively from some local news source with some kid who who knows what he's doing now, but just doing weather. Um, anyway, back uh, back here you can see me again adjusting the values as I put in another clip. Th these are particularly interesting because the clips I used are full screen. And so when I go to the full screen bit, you can see Nate peeking out from the back. And so I have to see I'm getting a, a black box there which I will form fit to the size of the clip. And then I will swap the two, like so, which puts that the uh, the video on top, a black box in between, and then unseeable to the audience is the clip of Nate, which I just always keep because it's the base clip and it needs to be there to hold the video project together. So sort of how that works. There I go, messing with the audio again. Uh, yeah, that one I screw up and I start to work with the uh, the wrong track of audio. Well, I really want Nate's audio. This was a joke uh, <laughs> that I was kind of unsure if I wanted to do uh, with the phallic symbol, but hey, I mean, English Office did it, so why can't I? <laughs> and again, that's one of the better jokes in the actual skit from Follies 2003. So now you can see Nate talking about like, and then we cut it. We had an idea where like he would start to talk about it as a phallic symbol, and then I would cut again. But ultimately, just the way that the clip ended up getting filmed, it didn't really work out. Although I would have liked to go along with it, but again, there's the uh, the threat of doing too much uh, of that. Uh, please stand by. So um, I didn't go back to touch uh, slew tube at all because I had squeezed pretty much everything I could out of there. And I feel like that one's good and the jokes hit well, so I don't mess with that one at all. Uh, don't mess what's already perfect. So um, yeah, then it's moving on to KUHI. And I really should have probably gotten more organized with all of my clips up here, but I just went mostly on thumbnails when I was going through. And sometimes it would take me an annoyingly long amount of time to uh, to go and find what I was looking for, but I did eventually find it. So something to be said for that. Again, there's the original KUHI club, and there's the one I want. Um, so yeah, we've got the standby for KUHI news. Uh, I mean, Nate like yawns. That's a joke that he does for that one, but I I felt that that might be too similar to the sleeping scene, so. Though I do wish I could have referenced how boring that opening part is. And then, if you look here, it doesn't come across very well in this video, but the KUHI logo, when we watched it for the thing, has this terrible just graphical screw-up. Not that, not the seizure bit, but like just like it gets super pixelated. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't a connection issue, but for some reason when I downloaded it here, it didn't show, so... It was a joke that I really liked that just didn't play out, unfortunately. So, yeah, um, a lot of scenes of the assembly, all, all of the scenes of the assembly, I think, except for the one, were cut out of uh, the final bit. They do a, a piece on uh, Mr. Merritt uh, being interviewed by, like, KSTK in this. Uh, there was, like, maybe one okay joke in there, and even then I wasn't too confident with it. So not much that I do with uh, with uh, KUHI, at least while I'm recording my editing. Um, yeah, so now it's actually, we've warped time a bit, and now we're onto the export process. Um, so here, I'm pretty happy with where I've got the piece, and so I go to export, select master file, check my settings, go through them all to make sure I've got them right, and as soon as I do that, I realize that I forgot to make a thumbnail. And I wanted to make a thumbnail first that I didn't forget. So on to make a thumbnail. So this is the secret behind how the thumbnail that you see on YouTube is created. So I go in and 
idiotically, I grab the wrong title that I want to copy over. And I, um, sorry, I thought someone was at the door there. And so then I go back and I eventually, I just wanted to copy the title so I could have like some pre-made text that I didn't have to go through and find the font again. Probably doing too much work, but either way. So I just plop it wherever. And I go through, and since this is the extended edition, we have to put extended edition. Obviously, for the regular edition, I didn't bother with this extended edition title stuff, but um, what you'll see after this is what I did. So um, check font stylization, see if there's anything I want, make it bigger, um, pull it down a bit, but I want to give it a little more flair, so I'm going to turn it on its side. And to do that, I go into the positioning which is a button at the bottom uh, bottom left as soon as I get the size right bottom left come on come on come on here we go and so now I adjust the positioning like so grabbing that little knob there um, but of course uh, I'm never happy with it. And you notice how the white text is overlapping on the white text. That doesn't look necessarily good, especially because this will always be presented at a rather small size uh, since it's a thumbnail. Pull it around to get, try and get it sort of centered. I just want it to look decent. <laughs> uh, once I'm happy with it, select where I want the thumbnail to be, uh, to be taken from. I go to the same export. And now I go to save current frame. Uh, I just export as a JPEG image because I know that YouTube will take that for sure. It's not too big. Um, give it a quick name. Do, do, do. X thumbnail. Uh, put it with all of the other files I've been working with. Uh, there's all, you can even see some of the files for this video itself, the edits ones. Uh, and then there we go. That exports relatively quickly. You can see it's done. Close that up. Now I go and export the video but I forget to take off the extended edition, which I don't want at the end. So I hide that or just delete it. <laughs> Actually, I want to keep it around in case something goes horribly wrong and I need to make another title. So I just hide it, which is the, uh, I think it's the V key on the keyboard. Boom, it's hidden, but still there in case I ever need it again. Now we go to master file. Now we go check all the settings. Next, Cummings reviews extended yeah and save and boom there it goes and so thankfully since we have relatively fast computers here at Cadfly it gets processing right away and I don't have to worry about it too much at all and so yeah that's uh, that's sort of how one makes Cummings reviews or makes edits to it um, and sort of the background for it I hope that you found this remotely interesting. Um, yeah, you can watch it trudge along there. It doesn't help that I'm re that yeah, I'm recording the uh, screen capture footage, which slows down the uh, the process a bit. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's that's pretty much how it works. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to show you how it's done. Uh, really enjoyed uh working on this project nate was great um yeah uh yeah oh yeah uh just to, i said yeah a lot to just sort of close it off this is how one makes a behind the scenes video uh new event follies behind the scenes and that up oh, there's a senior prank going on behind me that's probably not going to go over well, but we'll see. Anyway, Cummings Reviews behind the scenes. That's the video that you just finished watching right now. There's the project file that I'm actually using, still using it right now. So, yeah, thank you for watching. And, um, yeah, I appreciate the positive response to Cummings Reviews, and uh, I hope to make videos in the future. So, uh, thank you. Take care. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <coughs> ah, shoot.